Hi, and welcome to the Opinionated Bitch. I am your fabulous drag queen host, Prince Electro Diamond. And today, I'm going to discuss war and my opposition to the war. Talking about in any war in general. Now, I will say this. In the United States, where you have people who can't afford to go to the hospital, it's ridiculous that we have a Pentagon budget, Pentagon defense budget, that is $858 billion, which is $45 billion more than President Biden asked for. Now, I have to ask, we're in no war right now. All we're doing is helping Ukraine. We're not in a war right now. Why the fuck does the government need so much money to go to war? But, again, we give billions of dollars to Israel. And they have their own health care in the country, but we can't fucking have it here. Because we have to give money to the defense, give money to the defense, give money to the defense. No, it's ridiculous. The United States, honestly, has not been, sorry, not has, have not been the good guy in a war since World War II. Not in Vietnam. Not in the Gulf War. Not in Iraq. Not in Afghanistan. In fact, in the Iraq and Afghanistan war, the only things that the people there were fighting for was we were fighting for power and we were fighting for oil and mineral deposits. We were not fighting for anything that we absolutely needed here, that we could not get from other countries through diplomacy. The fact that the president's solution... At the time, who was George W. Bush, who went in into Iraq and Afghanistan, his solution was to go to war with people, to go after Saddam Hussein, just like his dad did. In fact, if you look at percentages, 34% of people supported the war in Iraq, while 65% of people opposed it. So... The majority opposed the war, and George Bush went into that war anyway. And in fact, if you look at stats, in 2020, 65% of people told Gallup that the United States shouldn't go to war unless they're attacked first. Meaning, that's in 2020. So in 2001, let's go back in history, say not that many people were opposed to the war when we started because you had the mainstream media that would not allow a person who was against the war to be on news networks. In fact, Phil Donahue got fired for it on MSNBC. When he came out and opposed the war, he got fired. Jesse Ventura opposed the war who was on MSNBC, also got fired. Or they didn't fire him, they put him in a hold. Meaning they paid him money, but since he opposed the war, they wouldn't let him do his show. So, we've got all that. We've got a country that constantly tells you that you should honestly just support people who are for... We should just support the war. We should just support our troops. Support our troops is told throughout our country. Just support our troops. Support our troops. And it also, in that way, I feel it leads to a false sense of I shouldn't say a false sense. What it leads to is if you talk out against the troops like I am, and it's not because I don't blame the troops for why I'm against the troops. I blame politicians because, in truth, war is the result of bad politics. That's all the war is. 
Like, this notion that we're fighting for freedom and that the people in the troops are fighting for freedom, they're not fighting for freedom anymore. They're fighting for the interests of Shell, Exxon, any company that needs minerals such as lithium for batteries and cell phones. That's what they're fighting for. They're not fighting for us. Our freedom's not under attack. Not during this presidency. Under Trump's presidency, it definitely was. And if Trump gets elected again in 2024, it absolutely will be again under attack. But going back to our stats here, 71% of people oppose sending troops to Ukraine are opposed to sending troops to Ukraine. Because that's the thing with this Ukrainian war. They are all ready to just send in troops, send in military supplies, but they're not at all willing to fight. They're not at all willing to start with diplomacy. Because that's what we should be doing in every war. Which, okay, let's go back again into history to the Iraq War. We didn't have to go to war for that. Everyone, yes, people wanted to go after Osama bin Laden. You don't have to send in a bunch of military troops to get him. What you do is you find out where he is, you send in federal agents, and you kill him. It's not, it's literally not that hard. And throughout history, people who have spoken out against the war have been shunned because, again, you're considered un-American if you oppose any war. But my response is, I am pro-peace because peace does not equal death. War equals death. In fact... If you look at the Iraq war, between 268,000 and 295,000 people died in that war. Died in a war that we had no reason fucking fighting in. And 69,095 military and police died in the war in Afghanistan. So I got to ask you. We're going into these wars... For what? Because I will say this. If you honestly believe to this day that we went into Iraq to look for weapons of mass destruction, you are fucking stupid. If you believe that Saddam, who's that, oh, sorry, Osama bin Laden was in Iraq, you are fucking stupid. You honestly didn't see anything. And even, I say that to this day, you shouldn't have opposed it then. Because if you look at films such as Fahrenheit 9-11, which is done by Michael Moore, there was no reason at all for the United States to go into Iraq or Afghanistan, honestly. If we were going to go after any country, we should have gone after Saudi Arabia. But we won't go to Sa- we won't go after Saudi Arabia then. We wouldn't go after Saudi Arabia then, and we won't go after Saudi Arabia now because even President Biden was seen fist bumping the leader of Saudi Arabia. Because let's be clear, Saudi Arabia was the one who attacked us on 9-11. Not Iraq, not Afghanistan. And all that those wars led to was racial profiling. It's happened with Black people for centuries, 
And after the Iraq War, in some people's minds, after I shouldn't say after the Iraq War, after September 11th, it happened with lots of people going on planes after September 11th. Anyone who was, quote, terrorist looking. What the fuck does that mean? What the fuck does the terrorists look like? Because there are plenty of terrorists who are white who have attacked churches in America. And last time I checked, they didn't look like Middle Eastern people. So again, to anyone who's in the military, if you thought you were going into Iraq, or sorry, if you thought you were going into the military to fight for people or fight for our rights, you weren't. If you thought that America was the good guys, we weren't. We were simply... We're simply... Anyone who goes into the military is simply pawns in the United States government's political... They're political pawns in their game of chess. As I will say, I used to be a Republican. And even as a Republican, towards the end... Actually, all the times I was a Republican, I was honestly probably around... I only voted as a Republican once, and that was in 2012, because I was uninformed. But that's what I will say Republicanism usually breeds, is it breeds ignorance. It doesn't breed sort of intelligence. It believes people saying racist shit like oh, towel heads. Like that's what that that's what a, being a fucking Republican is. It's making fun of people because you don't want to fucking learn about them. And I will say this, even speaking on the military, there were plenty of years that they wouldn't let gay people serve in the military because they're like, because of don't ask, don't tell. Something signed into law by President Clinton. So that's proof that everyone who says the Democrats are always good guys, no. But once that was repealed, it was honestly great because I honestly think if you believe that you're going into the military to fight for our freedom and you're gay, then you should do that. You should do that 100%. I don't agree with it at all. Because, again, as someone who's very anti-war... I'd rather just sit here and be fabulous for you on cam than go off to fight for our freedom or our rights. And people who say, you can't disrespect the troops, that's disrespecting America. No. Now, I don't know if I'd go to the extreme of, like, burning a flag. But I don't know. Maybe if the war, if wars got bad enough, I might do it. Because, shit. Again, as I said before, we haven't been the good guys since World War II. So, I ask you, which 
I will say this, even with America being the good guys in World War II, we did some barbaric things in World War II, and one of them was dropping a war a bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I understand that that's essentially what ended World War II. Nonetheless, it was kind of barbaric. Because in that you killed, yes, you killed the bad guys, but you also killed a lot of innocent people doing that. That's why people who are pro-drone strikes, I don't get it. Because what drone strikes are is essentially you're flying a drone over, which is a bomb, and you're going to blow up innocent people to try and get one guilty person. It's disgusting. And through that, I will say, going back to Republicans versus Democrats, Obama didn't do that much better. Because Obama include, basically like continued a lot of the war tactics that George W. Bush had started in 2001. So, for everyone who's like, all praise Obama, I'll pass. I mean, Obama did get gay people gay marriage, so I gotta give him that, because he did. But, in terms of, like, overall, Obama being a good president, no. No, I mean, granted, he did a lot of good things, including kind of fixing the economy. Which I understand everyone who's going to come, who could come to me says that the economy was better under Obama than Bush. I agree with that. But all he did was like help Wall Street. That's what all most presidents do is help Wall Street. And I don't I don't feel that we should be helping Wall Street. I think we should be helping the American people. Because all of this bullshit Reagan era stuff about trickle down economics isn't going to happen. Because it just doesn't. Like, you're going to give the top 1% all of the money and you're going to leave the bottom 90% to fucking like fight over scraps? No. Like, why would you do that? Because honestly, the I said the bottom 90, the bottom 99% are the ones who pay most of the taxes anyway. Because if you look at rich people like Donald Trump, they aren't paying a lot in taxes. You or I are paying more in taxes than he is, and he's got easily quadruple the amount of money that we have. But yet, he's the one who gets all the tax breaks. He's the one who gets all the, quote, well, actually, he gets all the welfare. That's why I hate when, Demo when I'm sorry, not Democrats, when Republicans say they're so anti-welfare, really? You going to take back your tax breaks, motherfucker? You going to hand in? You going to hand back that money that they gave you during the pandemic? No. Yet you're going to stop college kids from getting money that they need to pay off their student loans. Because... Your solution is, as rich people and as Republican politicians, to always say, how are we going to pay for it? How are we going to pay for it? How are we going to pay for it? You cut the defense budget in half, because as I said, $858 billion this year. You cut that in half, there's your money for college tuition. There's your money for universal health care. Because you have the money. 
And if you say you don't, then either you're ignorant, you're ignorant and stupid, or you know that we have the money, but you don't want to do that because it'd be too much to help the American people. Because you're like, shit, they don't pay, they don't pay me. They don't bribe me with bribes. They don't give to my campaign. Why would I help them? Even though they're the ones who elected you. No, 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 no. Can't help them. Can't help the American people. And I'm not saying... All politicians are like that, but the majority of politicians are absolutely like that. They would rather take money from Wall Street than help you. Wall Street, rich people, corporations. Yeah, just take money. And in truth... The only way that's going to get fixed is if we get the money out of politics. Which you have to literally ban corporate lobbyists from being loud in the halls of Congress. And you have to overturn Citizens United, which allows for politicians, or no, not sorry, corporations to act as people. Because money with Citizens United is free speech. Because apparently the people who wrote that shit just think that we're stupid. They think, oh, they're going to believe us. They're going to believe that corporations are people. And a lot of people don't even know what Citizens United is. This is part of the problem. This is the media's fault. But the media is not going to talk about Citizens United because corporate media is taking money from the same companies. So, like, why would you sit there and talk about how bad it is for the politicians to take money when you're taking money yourself? I don't get it. I don't get politicians asking people for millions of dollars when they only get paid $40,000 a year. And yet you sit there and you kiss the ass of these rich, rich donors because at some point they're going to help you out in the end. I will say this. Anyone who honestly supports anyone that's not a progressive in the Democratic Party or anyone who supports a Republican, you have no interest in actually helping America. Because the Republicans will tell you that they're going to help America. They're not going to help America. They're the ones who sit there and take women's rights away. They want to take away gay rights. They want to bring us into more wars. And they want to just give rich people tax cuts. That's what the Republican Party is. And anyone who thinks it's any different than that clearly just doesn't... Well, either they know or they'll only watch Fox News to get their news from. I will say this. I tried to watch Fox News. Well, actually, I shouldn't say I tried to watch Fox News. I was working somewhere, and I was on in the background at one point. And God. I watched it, and I... And it's literally like I felt my brain cells leaving my body. Because I'm like, how do people watch this stupid shit for hours on end? 
because it was not even a week ago where Jesse Waters was on Fox News who they were doing a story about how they changed the um, the FAA changed their name from airmen to air pilots and literally said the word transvestite in that discussion. No, no, he didn't. He said transsexual. Someone else corrected him and said the word transvestite. It's like, this, it's ignorance. How the fuck can you say that shit? Because saying the word transsexual and transvestite is almost like saying the T word. I'm not going to say it. Because I know that word is very offensive to trans people. I would never fucking say it. And they would probably say it on Fox News if they think they thought they could get away with it. But they know they can't. And that's what some people consume all day. And if that's what you consume, go outside. Like, literally pick up, I would say pick up a newspaper, but you can't even trust the newspapers because they're all corporations too. New York Times isn't going to tell you about the truth about what's happening in the news because, again, they're bought off. And I will say this as I'm bringing this to a close. If you think that war is the answer, you're wrong. If you think giving the military endless money is right, you think giving them hundreds of billions of dollars is right, you are also wrong. Because in truth, you're not helping people. Like, war does not help people. All war does is bring people down. Because unless there's a world war, there's no point in going to war. And with that being said, this has been The Opinionated Bitch. I am your host, Prince Electro Diamond, and I hope you've enjoyed.